Hello everyone. Uh, today our topic is molecular cloning. Molecular cloning. Molecular cloning is a creation of recombinant DNA and it is essential for many scientific research and discoveries. With this molecular cloning technique, we can amplify or manipulate a gene of interest by inserting them into a plasmid, make them to replicate and then make them to show a protein expression. So this molecular cloning helps us to express a bacterial gene inside a plasmid, etc, etc. But there are a lots of different types of cloning techniques that are available, but the choice of selection of a particular cloning technique is depends on a personal preference by which they have their projects of cost, speed and availability of their starting materials. So in this video, I'm particularly going to focus on the restriction enzyme based cloning technique and which is the most classical cloning methodology till now it's in practice. So here we use a restriction enzyme called as endonuclease. This restriction enzyme is used to cut our double stranded DNA that is a gene of interest into a fragment and also our plasmid to which our gene of interest is going to be ligated. This restriction enzymes may cause uh, two different types of cuts, which can be a uh, overhang or without overhang. We call it as sticky ends and blank ends. So any piece of DNA that has a restriction site can be cut into the fragments and the plasmid which has the same restriction site is cut into fragments and these both are ligated together with the help of T4 DNA ligase. This is the overall principle of the restriction enzyme cloning. So it is important to note that restriction enzyme target sites can be repeated throughout a specific DNA sequence which can make it difficult to identify a compatible restriction enzymes that cut your interest or a DNA sequence at only the desired location for your cloning project. This restriction enzyme cloning will leave behind some scar in the DNA sequence and can be time consuming compared to other cloning methodologies. How can you choose a restriction enzyme? For example, if your gene of interest already has a flanking restriction size, which is well and good, but you sh your plasmid should also have the same restriction sites, especially in the point of a multiple cloning site. It, and it should be very important to note that the restriction site should not cut any other portion of your interest or any other part of your plasmid. And then the restriction site should uh, make your insert to ligate inside the plasmid in the perfect orientation rather than making it in an anti-sense version. So if you cannot find a restriction site or a restriction region in your gene of interest or your recipient plasmid, it is very simple that you can design your primer along with a restriction site and do a PCR amplification by which you can add the restriction sites to your gene of interest and your plasmid. Restriction digestion reaction. Once we confirm that your gene of interest and your recipient plasmid contains the restriction enzyme site, we perform the restriction digestion reaction for both the donor, that is the gene of interest and the recipient plasmid. This restriction digestion is carried out for two to four hours to overnight at 37 degrees Celsius. Here, especially the recipient plasmid is treated with alkaline phosphatase in order to stop the self ligation of the recipient plasmid once it is cut with the restriction enzyme. Then the after the time period of restriction digestion, the products are run in an agarose gel electrophoresis to confirm the restriction product, then proceed for ligation reaction. For example, how can you confirm the restriction digestion? If your 
plasmid or your gene of interest is uncut, you will see a uncut band which is of total length of 4070 base pair in this figure. But if case, if your restriction digestion works in a perfect way, you will see two different bands of two different sizes, one with 2800 base pairs and other with 1200 base pairs. In case, this is your recipient plasmid. So we need a region of the backbone that is 2870 base pair. So we can able to cut the band and do gel purification or in some cases like when you perform the restriction digestion with your gene of interest where there will not be any additional sites. So you can go for PCR purification. As I mentioned before, we use alkaline phosphatase especially for the recipient plasmids in order to prevent them from self ligation. So in this case, if you add the phosphatase, the vectors, the uh, end of the vectors will have OH, OH in their both 5' prime and 3' prime regions. So they cannot form a self ligation. So this will help us to reduce the number of false positive results and it increases the efficiency of ligation into your recipient plasmid. In this figure, you will clearly understand when your vectors are not treated with phosphatase, it is forming a self ligated product. But once you treat with alkaline phosphatase, it doesn't form any self ligation since the both ends are not compatible to join each other if the alkaline phosphatase is added and blocks the ligation of the recipient plasmid to itself. Once you do gel purification and you confirm the concentration of your DNA, you will proceed with the ligation reaction. This ligation reaction is to be performed with 1 is to 3 ratio. That is, the recipient plasmid is to be 1 and your insert should be in 3 times greater than your recipient plasmid. And it is very important to carry out a negative control experiment uh, with, at the same time. Since the negative control should not have any insert, it should have only the recipient plasmid along with all other reaction buffers. This ligation is carried out overnight at 16 degrees Celsius. Once you're done with your ligation, you should carry out the step called transformation. Transformation is that you are transforming your constructed plasmid into a bacteria. This bacteria is of your, your choice, which is known as a competent cell, where you use 1 to 2 microliters of your ligation reaction into the competent cell. Uh, in some cases, we go for an E. coli competent cell, which is DH5-alpha or TOPS10, etc. Then, if you are if your plasmid is like more than 10 kb, you can go for electrocompetent cell as well. Once you get transformed, you should provide them with heat shock to get to make the cells to get your plasmid inside it, then cold treatment, then you go for incubation for one hour and then spread your transformed colonies in the plate with a perfect antibiotic. Then you can store your transformed plates at 37 degrees Celsius for overnight since your E. coli will grow in one night at 37 degrees Celsius. And due to this antibiotics, the resistant gene in your plasmid will help us to identify the transformed colonies. So once your Plates shows a transformed colonies, pick 3 to 10 colonies of individual bacteria, then grow them overnight, then purify your DNA, then perform the restriction digestion, then check whether your gene of interest is inserted into the plasmid at the right position or not, followed by sending it for sequencing to confirm its perfect sequences. Other than this, you can also perform the colony PCR along with your negative control just to make it confirm whether your colonies are positive or negative. 
in some cases you should also perform some uh, positive reactions to make it uh, to make confirm whether your cloning is done perfect or not thank you